Hi, I'm Charlene Jorgensen and welcome to Quilting from the Heartland. Today my special guest is my daughter Angie. Angie's been with us now for three seasons and it's good to have you back again, Ange. Thanks, Mom. It's fun to share another new project with everyone. Today Angie's going to show us how to do butterflies using the Quilter Starter Kit. And I'm going to first let Angie show us some of the fabrics that we've been working with. Well, if you remember, Mom, you came home with this pretty piece of butterfly fabric. And I decided that this would be one of the projects that I wanted to do. You notice it has lots of nice, lively colors in it. So I started out by picking out nine batik fabrics that match this piece. And we have yellows and greens and reds and blues. So that's how I decided to pick the certain fabrics that I did. We have a lot of bold and a lot of color that has energy in it uh, in this quilt. Let's look at this piece. Um, this has blues and golds. So when I decided to do the rest of the butterfly, I tried to pick out the golds for the wings with accents of blue. So you'll see that the solids that we have over there are oranges and golds. Let's give them a, a quick look at one of the first butterfly blocks that you came home with. Well, when you look at this, you'll see why we didn't actually use it in the end quilt. It got a little too wild. We have some good color choices going on, mm -hmm. but there's too much print. So that's why we decided to go with more of fabrics that read as a solid. The print in the fabric actually takes over the design itself, and it's hard to, to decide whether you should look at the print in the fabric or the butterfly. This is going to go in my closet until I get enough of these pieces to make a quilt, and we'll call it, um, look what happens when you get a little bit crazy. Should we, before we start cutting some of the fabric and playing with that a little more, probably take a look at the quilt on the wall so they get a look at where we're going to go with this project today? Okay, let's do that. One of the first things you might notice when looking at the quilt is that the butterflies aren't flying all straight up and down. Mm -hmm. We gave them a little twists and turns. Um, it just adds a little more life to the quilt and makes it more interesting to look at. Also, yeah, when you look at the quilting in the blocks, you'll notice that we haven't quilted around each of the pieces, but rather put in veins like you would see in a, butter, in a real butterfly. There are antennas on the butterfly, and then also the meandering behind the butterfly looks like swirls, so it would be a different type of meandering than what you would usually see. Then after we had all the butterflies done, we soon realized that we couldn't use that first border print that I brought home. And it was just a little too wild, so we picked out colors that were in the butterflies uh, and lined them with it. It's sort of a color on color print, but it's got little dots that give it a little bit of life. There are seven fabrics actually that we used for the sashing rather than just one and that's something that we've never done before. And I know that you can't enjoy the beautiful quilting on the sashing, but there's a continuous line flower and then there's also a flower on each of the cornerstones. And a little later we'll talk more about the quilting in the actual quilt. Um, Okay, let's take a look at some of the fabrics a little closer. And when you examine the batiks that we're working with, you'll notice that there's a lot of, uh, like we said earlier, energy and excitement in the fabric. And Angie's going to show us how to fussy cut some of the parts to the butterflies. When you have a fabric that has lots of this design, you can actually move the template and decide what part you'd like to take out of the quilt because you can see through it, you can slay it on top, get it how you'd like it, and then you'll want to use a small cutting mat so you can turn the board to make your cuts. And she has fabric grips too on the back side of the templates and that keeps them from sliding when you're cutting. Now before I started I did pre-wash all these fabrics and it is very important because we have so many colors happening in this quilt. So there you can see we have our first wing. And depending on how you want it to, the leaves to go, you can turn it either way. And this would go right here. So if you were to cut the uh, wing for the other side, would you cut it exactly the same or try to get it as close as possible? It would see when I moved it over here, now the lines go up and down. Mm -hmm. So I would try to keep it all either going up and down 
or all sideways. Mm -hmm. You've done the same thing I see with the pale blue too. You've got a directional print. Yes, this was actual pussy willow fabric. Uh, pussy willows on, printed on the fabric and I cut them so they all ran in mm -hmm. the same direction on the quilt. When you look at uh, this next fabric, it has so terrible many colors in it that you could do more than one butterfly out of the one piece of fabric. You could do some pink ones and some blue ones and it looks like you've already been into yep, it before. I have one of the butterflies in the quilt is made from this fabric and I chose where I wanted it to come out. You might waste a little bit of fabric that way, but in the end it's worth it. Why don't we show them the original background that we thought we'd use. This is the first one that I picked up for the butterfly fabric, uh, or the background, and I thought it was so perfect because of the movement of the pattern in it, but after Angie uh, made the first block, we decided that there was way too much happening in the background and that we had to tone it down a little bit with this background fabric. And this one is a white on white print. It has butterflies, dragonflies, and ladybugs, and a much nicer ending to, the, to our blocks. We sort of ended up using this design in the quilting, so it all worked out in the end. We just had to be a little flexible in what we wanted to happen. I think it's time to, to go over and sew. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think so. Uh, I don't know, though. Did we tell them which parts of the templates we used for each of the parts of the block? Maybe we should do that okay. before we start sewing. Well, the, the quilt uses two sizes of half squares, a small square, and a rectangle. And you can see how they fit. Here's the large half square and the small half squares and then the rectangle down the middle here. And don't you agree that it would be really difficult to work on a quilt like this if you didn't have a flannel board? I would get all confused as to where each piece would be. It's so easy when you're sewing to get things moved in different places and sometimes you don't notice it until the whole block is sewn together. So this helps you keep organized and I try not to take more off the board than I can find my way back to. So let's go ahead and take it over to the sewing machine. In front of me I have a different palette because the one we're sewing on today was based off this board of fabric. And it has yellows and golds and blues and teals in it. And we have different textures in the fabric. We have some, oh they kind of look like scales and then we have solids and more leafy prints. And that just sort of gives more life to the quilt. I like this one, I think, almost better than the first one we did, but we haven't seen the finished quilt yet. Um, but we got the idea for this quilt from the other one. It's a little more formal looking, I think, mm -hmm. than the first piece was. So when we start out sewing, I like to put an anchor cloth down. I think this is one thing you taught both Brittany and I to do and it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing. So I'm going to be sewing with a quarter of an inch seam. A scant quarter, a scant remember quarter scant, of scant inch. quarter. And I think the first seam that I will be sewing are the two half square units together. So I'll just line them up and I have also starched my fabric ahead of time. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with. And the reason that I stress the scant quarter inch seam allowance is so that you make up for the amount of fabric that's used in the seam line when you're sewing. I'll also be doing a little bit of chain sewing and that's something that saves you a little bit of time mm -hmm. along the way. So I'll pick up these next two pieces. Ahead of time I've already sewn these two squares together and now I'll, and then this half square unit together. Mm -hmm. So now I'll just go ahead Put that on. You know what we should do though too, and just show them that those two half squares equal the smaller square. Kind of a little sewing test. Yeah, and if they're not confident about their seam allowance, this is a good way to decide if you really are or aren't uh, doing the right seam allowance. So it gives you kind of a second chance. Mm -hmm. And now to make sure that I'm going to get this piece on right, I'll maybe just hold it up here again, like this and just check. It doesn't hurt to check a couple of times. And that's the way it goes. So I'll just line it up. I like to also use a stiletto to help hold the seams down. 
as I'm sewing. You'll also notice that she's not doing any back stitching when she's sewing because it just creates bulk in the corners. And these seams are going to be crossed over again anyway, so they're going to be plenty of strength there. Now I'll just take my little anchor cloth off and put it in the front. You could pin those together if you wanted, but I just like to take them and you know. while you're clipping off the ears, I'll just finger press it open. Okay, and then I'll do a little bit of finger pressing myself. Helps to have longer nails to do this. Projects go a little bit quicker when you have two people working on them. Now you can lay your pieces back onto the flannel board and that helps just to make sure that you're going in the right direction and that everything is where it's supposed to be. Looks like it is. So now I'll sew these two together. I like to sew with the seam mm -hmm. up on the top too. I like the colors in this quilt so well. They're a little bit more your colors, I think. I like them too. It's fun to switch back and forth between projects. Okay, and I'll just get this anchored back down. And we'll press this open. Like this. And we give it a little press. When finger pressing, you actually scratch the fabric rather than just moving your finger across it. Okay, now the next step will be to connect this piece to here. And then we're going to take one seam across the top. Well, let's go ahead and connect this first. This should be the same length as the bottom square mm -hmm. if you've taken the right seam allowance. So we'll just line it up. And take our seam. Okay. Angie's got more than one anchor cloth so she doesn't have to always worry about the one in back. Now we just have one seam left, and then we'll get to see how the whole bottom half of the butterfly looks when done. Okay, give it a little press. It's kind of handy to have a little iron mm -hmm. by you, and you notice that we, we do, but when we, the whole quilt top is done, I usually take it to a bigger iron oh, yeah, and definitely. give it a better press. Okay, so now let's see how this goes back in the quilt. Turn it up. There you go. There we go. Now we just have this seam right here. It's kind of like building a little puzzle. Now we have a couple of points to match. So we'll put the first pin right at the base here. We like to use silk pins when we're doing all of our pinning because the shaft is so tiny and sometimes it is necessary to, to sew over the pins. Um, we try to pull them out, but sometimes you forget, or it just gives you a little more accuracy, too. And then if you'd like, you could put a pin at the beginning, just to get you going the right way here. Okay. And pull the pin out. Just this single block, Angie, would make a pretty pillow top, too. You could do that to match your bedspread. That would be really nice. Kind of a decorative touch. Okay, I have a little bit of thread caught here, so we'll just clip that away. Things don't always go as smoothly as you'd like, but you can usually get out of it. Okay. Now when I come to this seam, I'll be wanting to sew right over the base of the point. And I'll take the time to line up the end so it comes out right. Use my stiletto to help keep it smooth. And that should be it. Clip this off. And now we'll see what we have here. This is a great project for beginners to do. Check to see Even your though it, it seems like there's a lot of different parts to it, it still is a beginner's project. Um, 
not only can they design and play with the different colors of fabric, the textures of them, create their own block, but then they can play with all the uh, different steps of sewing and it's just fun because it's just squares and half squares. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of hard matching. Okay, now we just have one seam left on the bottom, and that's the seam here. And you can see how the bottom of the butterfly is taking shape. So we'll just take a pin. The block looks a lot more complicated than it really is. Yes, it does. It's just pretty simple, actually. Okay, and that lines up, and we'll just put a pin in the front. I think that the yellow and blue one was simpler to sew because I only had a, a few color choices to work with. I think that sometimes it's harder to work with the large palette mm -hmm. than it is the smaller one. So maybe for a beginner you want to limit yourself to two or three colors throughout the quilt. Okay. And also we did stick with the border print that we had, had to work with. So this one we did. And that will complete the bottom half of the butterfly. We'll check it here to see if everything's lined up right. Take the pins out. And the seam came out on the front, so then we'll go ahead and press it. I know a lot of the viewers like to press their seams to one side. Uh, we've just started doing the seams open and we really like it that way. Um, but it still doesn't mean that if you do it to one side that it's wrong. I think it's just a, a preference thing. Oh, that's beautiful, Angie. That's the bottom half of the butterfly. Now, to continue on to the front, you would just sew this seam onto here. These two seams go together. This seam goes together, and then this seam up here. And then you just connect them in rows. And I think maybe we'll connect a few of those pieces with some chain sewing. Just line them up. Chain sewing will save so much time as well as thread, just so long as you don't take too many pieces off at one time. That's where it's nice to have the flannel board. You can put them back into units and know where you're at. Just keep your pieces lined up. Like this. And I can even put this seam on if I want to right now. Let's take a pin. This is where pinning becomes important when you have lots of points to match up. Mm -hmm. You know what I might do on that one is I might turn it over and sew from the other side. So you can see the point. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a good right? point. Okay, and check to the other side to make sure that it's right where you want it to come out. And pin it. There we are. And we'll add this to our long chain of pieces. Okay. Angie's using an open toe foot too, and that's so nice uh, to work with. You, she has an unobstructed view of her sewing, and especially now when she comes to an intersection like that, she can see the exact point that she wanted to sew over. Okay. And there we are to the end of that. And I'll just bring my ankle cloth back around to the front. There, now they'll have a better idea of how the block actually goes together. And that's kind of an idea of what chain sewing looks like, too. We'll just open them up. Very good. Check the seams on the front. And finger press. I never realized how important finger pressing was until... Well, the reason that we do that is to prevent wells. And while I do this pressing, why don't you go ahead and do the other finger pressing? Beautiful points, Ange. Okay. It's coming together here. And this is where it's nice to have the flannel board again. Make sure that we get the butterfly back where it's supposed to be. And check it. 
I like to keep putting it back up there every time just to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. That's going to be very nice. Looks like it is. I think we probably should stop here now because I think they see how the actual butterfly is going to, f to look when it's finished. And let's take them to the twisting and turning part of the block. And this is really an exciting part to, of this design. Uh, we got the idea from Sharon Craig and she developed this technique for those that had blocks that were all different sizes and and well you know how it is Ange when more than one person is working on the same quilt sometimes your blocks aren't always the same size and that's really how this became uh, this technique was developed. Well first um, we'll just pretend like these pieces aren't here yet and I started by sewing this piece up to here and I had to stop and I'll show you why in a little bit. But I'm going to interrupt you. How wide did you cut these strips? Oh, they were three inches wide. Depending on your project, it's how much twist and turn you want them to have is how, mm -hmm. how wide you cut the strips and three inches ended up so we could use a 12 and a half inch ruler on the end. Okay. And so that's why we use three inch strips. So this is the first seam that goes on and you stop just before the end. Then the seam along here went on and then this, and then this. And then we turn this over and we sew this seam. That's why we had to leave it open mm -hmm. like this, so we could get this seam on first. So why don't we go ahead and finish that up. And you can turn it over to the back, and you'll want to The reason we decided to twist and turn the blocks was to add more motion to the quilt. We found that the blocks were very, very boring, just sitting square in the in the quilt itself. Okay. I'll just continue on to the end. You also can make the blocks to twist right or left, depending on how you start putting the frame on the block itself. If you start from the bottom and go up, it twists to the left, and if you start from the top and go down, I think it twists to the right. So. So you would do equal amounts both ways. Well, in this case, you would do four one way and five the other way so that you had them evenly distributed in the, in the quilt. Okay, now we'll just press that seam open. And I'll give it a little. I'll press it in while you get the ruler ready. And we'll need a rotary cutter. And then we'll show them how to do the twist and turn. I think actually we can just lay the ruler on top and show them how okay. we would have cut it. What you do is you lay the ruler, and this is a, again a 12 and a half inch ruler, and you line up the corners of the ruler with the seam line on the patchwork. So here is a corner up here, here is the corner here, down here, and then we need to move it just a little bit, and then you have it down here. And when you line up the ruler with each of the corners of the sashing, that's what gives you the twist and turn effect. And if you bring the other block down here, Angie, this one has, what you do is you would lay this on a, a mat board and trim it off with a rotary cutter. This gives you the finished block and see the the shape of the piece now that sits around the butterfly looks like that. Kind of like little pie wedges. Mm -hmm. Then after uh, you have all of the blocks trimmed it's time to start putting them into the quilt and Angie's already started building the rows of the quilt and this time we've decided to use an awful lot of white in the sashing and we've never done this before either. I think it's because we wanted the quilting to show up more in this quilt than it did the last one. We had such pretty quilting but it didn't show because of mm -hmm. the dark sashing. And when we turned the first quilt that we made upside down we saw the beautiful design like she said in the quilting and what we did was took these blocks and set them on the back side of the first quilt and that's when we decided we had to do the white sashing. So this time we're going to use a multicolored thread, variegated thread, uh, but we don't know if we're going to use the sliver or just the plain variegated uh, 30 weight thread. Let's also show them how to put the quilting design on and if you would hand me the 
the design and then I need the stabilizer. This is a uh, transparent water soluble stabilizer and whoops what I have to do is first spray the paper pattern then I will lay this down on top of the paper pattern and the neat thing about this Ange is that you can move it from place to place if it doesn't get laid down the, the right way the first time you can just pick it up and readjust it as much as you have to until you have it you know where, where mm -hmm. you want smooth it out and then what you do is you take a pen and just go over the top of that design and get your pattern and then place that on top of the quilt and you have your quilting design and then when you're finished you can just tear away and then wipe it with a damp cloth and your lines are all gone it's a real handy thing I sure hope that you've enjoyed watching Angie and I make the butterfly quilt today I can tell you uh, that we've enjoyed doing it for you